The vice president has made her first late night appearance since taking office last night. Uh, well, she didn't take office last night. Anyway, the, I don't know why it's written that way. The interview revealed her new position of legalizing marijuana and some glaring double standards. During her time as California's Attorney General, Kamala Harris was responsible for putting more than 2,000 people behind bars for marijuana-related crimes. But she said this last night. I strongly believe, in the, and the majority of Americans I agree, uh, nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed, right? Yeah. But Congress needs to act. We're 29 days away from the midterms. Um, ask who you're voting for, wh where they stand on this, and, um, and I encourage you to vote accordingly. Despite uh, growing criticism that she herself has been MIA, as the president's borders are, Harris took the opportunity to rip Republicans on the border crisis. She took aim at Texas Governor Greg Abbott for sending buses filled with migrants to the nation's capital in recent weeks. I just think it's an absolute dereliction of duty. If you see a problem and if we agree that, that we need to address it, then if you're a leader, participate in a solution. Right? When we first came in office, the first bill that we proposed was for a pathway for citizenship, uh, was to fix a broken immigration system, which was broken under the previous administration. Participate in the solution, because we are offering solutions. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't know. Roquefort Ranch, what do you put on that one? <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. It was like she was having one of those TED Talks to herself in the mirror. If you see a problem, you need to come up with a solution. She was lecturing herself. <laughs> She's the border arena. Why isn't she offering a solution? Uh, my favorite thing is when you, when you watch Kamala Harris, it's like a living wordle. You know those wordle <laughs> things where you just grasp at five words and try to make a solution? None of this makes sense. She is a PSA for your brain on drugs. Whatever happened, Ooh. the hang time here is long. I, I just, I don't know what this accomplishes, but incentivizing drug use and more sloth from our kids and criminality and border insecurity. I don't know how that helps the common good or any of us. You know, Emily, I am curious about why now with the marijuana and, and what types of cases, you know, it's not for everybody, obviously, so not every criminal, but, but this is an administration that has watched a lot of liberal DAs get put into place. So there are tentacles out there. What, what, why now? Because she's trying to curry votes. She doesn't actually stand for the legalization of marijuana because if she did, she Clearly. would have in her record many years ago. Everything that she does and all of her political positions, they always represent what she thinks she should be saying. And that's why people from California, like myself, find it so hard to get behind her because we see her as someone that just changes with the wind. She's never actually been convicted about anything. And her record, in fact, reflects the dead opposite of what she's saying right now. So remember back to 2010 when she staunchly opposed legislation in California that would have legalized marijuana. And her campaign manager, in fact, went on the record and said she feels drug selling harms communities. And then later on, she said, well, now I'll be for it for medicinal marijuana, not for recreational. And she laughed when someone said, what do you think about your, can your, um, your, the, uh, your oppositional candidate, how they think that they're for recreational marijuana? And of course, she did her usual cackling inappropriate affect. And then all of a sudden, now five years later, she's all of a sudden for it. And it's one thing I feel, wow. as humans as we evolve, for her to say, I now understand the difference. And I now believe firmly in the benefit of legalizing uh, marijuana marijuana on the federal level, and here's why. Here's why I believe in it for recreational purposes. But she hasn't articulated that. To your point, she fails utterly at even forming a sentence, let alone articulating where this is someone who has served as a district attorney, attorney general, senator, vice president, and still cannot articulate why we should get behind her for federally legalizing marijuana in how she thinks. I know I have my opinion, but she's failing at convincing us. So 2,000 people are a lot. And, and as Emily said, if the vice president really wanted to fight for, you know, minor charges on marijuana use, meaning they weren't attached mm -hmm. to murder or anything right. like that, why wouldn't she had 2,000 tries at that apple? Potentially, mm -hmm. I don't know how many of them well, were violent. But. Maybe Kamala Harris can start with the Venn diagram. That's a good place for her <laughs> oh, to start. Don't go there. And then, lot, you know, put the 2,000 convictions that she was responsible for, and then circle one, circle one yeah. and then <laughs> circle three of the You've Biden policy, yeah. and then find that middle ground. Yeah. Look, I think Kamala is so out of her league. 
she simply does not have any foundation. Mm -hmm. she, she, she is a flip-flopper. It's what you call in politics the ultimate flip-flopper. And on top of that, she doesn't even have the strength to go even talk to real reporters. She goes on late night television to get her quote unquote message across. Yeah. While President Trump led on criminal justice reform, worked with Democrats to actually come up with good solutions in dealing with nonviolent offenders, not the case with the Democrats. This is on top of everything with bail reform uh, that we know is only increasing crimes in these cities. I, yeah. I have a theory yeah. on yeah. why it would be night, late night shows because she does reflexively giggle Yes. And she doesn't have the right answers. Right. And in that environment, you wouldn't notice that she's giggling because it's a late night show. She Great fit point. right in in the realm of comedy. Um, I mean, her her statement, if you're a leader, participate in a solution. I mean, Talk her to the mayor. Hello, pot, meet yeah. the metal. Like, what, when has she had a solution? Like, she was sent to Ukraine to stop the war, and, you know, she didn't. She Working didn't. out well. She was sent to the meet with the European allies, I should say, to stop the war. She didn't. Um, the border, as you noted. And then for her to have the audacity to criticize Governor Abbott, it's really funny to me because she must not read Reuters' big publication, of course, a wire service, um, because the El Paso Democrat mayor has sent more immigrants, illegal immigrants, to different cities then the Republican governor, your party's mayor. He's a Democrat. He sent 8,000 migrants to New York City, 1,800 to Chicago, um, not to mention Lori Lightfoot, who's sending migrants, busing them from Cook County to DuPage County. And then you have the mysterious buses here in New York. I think you were yeah. with us last time we talked yeah. about that, Raymond. Um, sending illegal immigrants back to Florida to work the on planes. hurricane relief. Yeah. The mm -hmm. planes. Mm -hmm. um, so children on them. Right. Yep. Yeah. Correct. You know what's interesting, though, about the El Paso mayor? So some heat was taken there. And the clap back was, well, people know that they're coming. I let them know. Um, you don't think they know when the buses leave Texas <laughs> to come to D.C.? Right. Yeah, they, yeah. they sign documents. Yeah. They know exactly yes. where they're going. It's, it's a lot of histrionics mm -hmm. over, over yep. those arriving. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.